I really think it was that fight or flight instinct that allowed me to produce the milk necessary <laughs> to feed the wolf cub. Hey, everybody, welcome to Collider Mailbag on this Sunday. Well, I made a game effort out of it. My name is Simply Mark Ellis, and this is the show where we answer your guys' questions. You email them in all week. Sometimes it's on Movie Talk, sometimes it's on a Saturday. Today, it's on a Sunday. And joining me are two of my best friends in the entire world. Mark, really? <laughs> Really? Yeah. Yeah, Mark Riley. That's great. So uh, you, you were finishing with the uh, the Wolf Cub was uh, lactose intolerant, right? Yeah. It, it, yeah. it ends with a sad story as we bring in uh, Sinead Devrias here that uh, <laughs> yeah. he was suckling on me a little too long, and I think that the milk went into his little system, and he ended up dying, but um, God... I had a great time. No, it, was, with, it, it wasn't for lack of effort of no. you saving because you are a, a Greenpeace guy who likes to take over the world and, and help the little ones, the animals. And, and White Fang, or I called him Whitey. <laughs> this is, we're just the rabbit hole of whatever this is. I don't know. Hey, Sinead. Hey, guys. Um, <laughs> I am really impressed with your ability to produce milk yeah, just I, by instinct. So was I, and so was the entire pack that day, that magical day. Yeah. <sighs> Let's get to our first question. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Peter writes, Dear Collider crew, love your show and watch every day. My question is, what is it with sequels titles? Why don't they use numbers like old movies used to? Spider-Man 2, Superman 2, 3, 4, Rocky 2, 3, 4, etc. I know why Independence Day Resurgence was not Independence Day 2. Why were the Cap sequels Winter Soldier and Civil War not 2 and 3? Jack Reacher never go back, not Jack 2. Star Trek series Dark World could be called Star Trek 2 and Star Trek Beyond could be called Star Trek 3. Why do movies use subtitles for sequels? Thank you. Bring on the filthy. Way to kick off the show, Pete. I'm going to say that I believe sequel titles have become in vogue recently. First of all, we're getting a lot of remakes. So like Star Trek, it would get really confusing if it was Star Trek 2 and Star Trek 3. And we're like, wait, but that, is that the Wrath of Khan or is that this? So I think giving it a different subtitle helps out with some of those bigger franchises. And that probably works out for Superman as well. But sometimes, Riley, it just seems like I think the movie industry is a little paranoid because sequels for a long time. Time and still today just feel like a retread of the same material so if you give it a different title then it makes us feel like oh we're getting something new here like gremlins 2 the new batch ah there's a new batch of them what is your take on sequel names and where should we go from here well you, you hit it right on the head there i think when you think of star trek and you go it's it was star trek 2 mm -hmm. the wrath of khan now we're getting rid of that and doing star trek the Wrath of Khan, if Wrath of Khan was coming out today. So, and I think you're absolutely right. They got to, there's so many of these sequels and reboots that they're trying to distinguish themselves from the originals or the reboots or even the first movie. I happen to like this a lot because it actually gives you like kind of a story element yeah, before you even character. see. You get yeah. some character, you get some theme, you get, you know, depending on what it is, Captain America, Civil War. You know exactly what you're getting. You're not getting Captain America Part 3. So I, I happen to really like it. I think Electric Boogaloo is the gold standard Absolutely. in you know, sequel titles. Uh, I, I, I took the liberty of doing some research for the program today. And Speed 2, Cruise Control is another horrible one. Uh, Honey, I Blew Up the Kid. Yeah, is genius, and that's what Great they did title. for the rest of those friends. It was Honey, I Shrunk the Kid. Then it was Honey, I Blew Up the Kid. Then it, I think it was Honey, I Shrunk Myself. Yeah, Honey, yeah. I Slept with the Neighbor. There, there was a lot of different <laughs> ones. Sinead, do you have any favorite sequel titles that really stick out to you? Ah, uh, sounds like a no, but I'm no. gonna guess there's a yes underneath all that no. Maybe you know, I don't know. I kind of I don't know. The sequel titles they honestly don't really get me thinking one way or another about the movie. Like, if I'm excited about a sequel, it's because I'm just excited that there's another movie. You're you going to go see it anyway. Exactly. But I get what you're saying. It's because they want people to think that this is a standalone movie because sequels get a bad rap. Fun trivia question for both of you right now, Buzzin, when you know the answer. What is the name of the sequel to Legally Blonde? Uh, Legally Blonde. Something in the USA or Patriotic or White House something. Wh White House Down. Red, white, and blonde. Red, Red but that's blonde. right. You, you that's guys get right. it? Because she's... Yeah, she's blonde, and, and then she's going to Congress or something. What's she the, happens to be And then blonde. what's the third Legally Blonde movie? Uh, Legally Blonde. Never go I back. Now Emma Stripper. What's our yeah. next question? <laughs> Bungie writes, what's going down, beloved Collider crew? I love me some mighty Morphin Power Rangers, especially since Power Rangers was introduced to me by my grandfather right before he died. So I have a sentimental attachment to the Rangers. I am crunk, excited, for the new one, too. Ah. Gave the trailer 4.55 schmoes. That's high. Do you, <laughs> do, you, 
Do you think any surprise cameos are possible from the original Rangers in the new movie coming, or even sequels if they come, like how they did in Ghostbusters? I follow Jason David Frank, Tommy, on Instagram, and all he does is cooking and goes to wizard cons, so his time can't be that tied up. <laughs> no offense. I would take leave of my senses and go ape-ish crunk if any cameos happened, especially one by Tommy. Gratitude for being my entertainment at work. Shh, don't tell my boss. <laughs> Love, grace, and peace, my Collider crew. P.S. But John. But John. <laughs> yeah, I would be crunk too if I saw Tommy. <laughs> is that is that the proper way to use it? Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm I'm pretty crunk about the idea of some of the original Power Rangers showing up in cameos. And yes, as we've seen from uh, Tommy's Instagram account, he's not doing that much. So I think it would be a nice nod to the fans to bring him in and have a cameo. I think all the original Rangers should probably pop up. That's what everybody does. You, you brought it up, uh, Bunty. Bunty, you brought up Ghostbusters. Perfect example. They do this with all these remakes now. They put in a little cameo from the original series, and, and there you go, and the fans go, ah, oh, yeah, look at that. So why not Power Rangers? Riley, your usage of the word crunk is on fleek, nope, my friend. Nope, it's, it's <laughs> fleek. It's actually way off point and not very good. You're crunking the hell out of this crunk I'm gonna right crunk now. I'm going to crunk everything. Uh, Bunty, thank you for the nice story, too. Uh, the movie that always connects me to my grandmother is actually Field of Dreams. We watched it at my grandma's house for the first time and uh, fell in love with that movie. Good bonding experience. As far as the Power Rangers go, yeah, because you got the perfect storm of people being available for work and also so the perfect property to have them come in. I think the way you do it is if the hardcore fans notice, say, Tommy or an Amy Joe Johnson in there, then that's great, as long as it doesn't detract from the rest of us who are watching this movie who don't remember the original Power Rangers all that much, a la what Lou Ferrigno did in the Edward Norton Incredible Hulk. I think he's just working at, like, an apartment complex or something. He's, like, the security guy. Walks in, says hi. If you know it's Ferrigno, great. If not, no skin off your back. That's how I see it. Sinead, as somebody who adores the Power Rangers, should the original Originals be making cameos in these movies. I mean, yeah, I think it. I think it'd be fun. I would love to see it, but that's also because I adore the Power Rangers, and it would be a special treat for fans who really love the Power Rangers. But I agree with you too. It shouldn't be forced. It should be natural, and it shouldn't like add to a storyline unless that person becomes part of the continuing storyline. Like, let's not put them in there just because you're hoping it's going to get people more interested in your movie. Do you, if I could only give you Power Rangers or the Snap Pea Crisps for the rest of your life, which one are you going to take? Are you judging because I have a packet of no? They're snap they're they're, they're delicious. They're the crunkest of vegetable snacks. Those are um, just damn to set crunk. the record straight. Crunk actually means being drunk and high at the same time. Yeah, just so I'm crunking right now. <laughs> All right. Well, there we went. All right. All right. Jim writes, uh, it is true, you guys. Uh, here it is. It is. Is it possible the survivors of the Rogue One team end up on Alderaan or in a Death Star cell block at the end of the movie? This would be an easy way to write them all out and explain why none of them show up in any further movies or canon literature. Oh, man. Timmy, you're really condemning all these poor kids, aren't you? Well, it would be tragic either way, but it's really bad taste if they end up in a Death Star cell block because we've seen the Death Star cell block and we rescued the princess and Luke and Han and Chewie, yeah, they're under some fire. They didn't take the time to check any of those other cell blocks to see if any of the other members of the Rev Rebellion happened to be there. Maybe Diego Luna, way back in 1977, was in the next cell block. <laughs> oh, man, what a missed opportunity to rescue more people. Them ending up on Alderaan, though, imagine the feeling you're going to get at the end of this movie if, uh, you, hey, we stole the Death Star plants. All right, let's all go to the Hooters on Alderaan. <laughs> and then we know what's going to happen. It's going to be an ominous, tough end it's going to be really hard for Star Wars to end this movie the way that they love doing it, even in the sad ones where there's a tinge of hope and then it's going to be tough to do that with Rogue One because Misa going to die. Yeah. Talk about having a bad day. If they, get, if they get all of that action with Rogue One, get the plans, and then go celebrate on Alderaan. And can you just picture, poor, if, if Jin Erso is in the cell mm. and she's like, hey, don't worry, guys. We got the rebels here. They're here to sit. <laughs> Wait, they just went into a garbage chute. <laughs> They'll be back. Yeah, They'll they're be back. back. They're yeah. coming back. Don't worry about it. <laughs> We're fine. Yeah, that would, that would suck. Uh, I, I don't know if they'll do that, actually. I think it's a little on the nose to maybe put them in the Death Star, especially, or even go to Alderaan. I think we, we've been talking about this a lot. I don't think they're getting out of the movie. I just mm -hmm. don't think they're getting out of the movie. I don't think we're going to see a lot of celebration happening. I think maybe we'd have one survivor that we would have like a, a like a what if scenario. Who's like, your money on? Who's surviving I, Rogue One? I, well, Jin. You got to pick one person. You're picking Jin Erso. Just because she's the lead, but I I think in story wise, I think her going out in a blaze of glory is the way I would do it. But 
I'm not sure. Okay, shocking. See, I'm going to take Darth Vader. I think he makes out of this movie alive. Just, Wait, can I change my answer? You cannot. Okay, Jin Ursu. Well, let's make this international, Sinead, and take a question from a Canadian. All right, Craig writes, hey, Glider Crew, how's it going, eh? Craig from Canada here. <laughs> Love all your shows. Not enough hours in the day to watch everything. My question is, do you think DC and Warner Brothers have learned their lesson with the extended cuts with BVS and Suicide Squad? That they will release the proper version in theaters to begin with instead of, ex of extending it on Blu-ray? What if Wonder Woman and Justice League both turn around after released in theaters and say the ultimate or extended cuts will be on Blu-ray? It's not as if they have been cutting crap. The scenes actually need to be there and make the movies better. Thanks for taking my question. M-T-F-B-W-Y, which means, you guys, just in case you're wondering, mm -hmm. may the force be with you. Ah, no. damn it. I, I just lost money. <laughs> I, I get that. No, uh, I don't think Warner Brothers has learned their lesson, but that's not a lesson. They This is a business thing. They are not going to put in a three-hour Batman v Superman movie in theaters because it then dwindles down the amount of times you can see the movie. It's a monetary thing. That's why they do it, and the release later... Say what you will about making it better or worse is for the Blu-ray, it's for the fans to kind of fill in some blanks and give all the fans what they want. Now, I think they should try to come up with a cut, a version that's under two hours or just a little over two hours so that they can put so many in there and then have the faith in the filmmaker first to do the edit, to do the cut and give it that way. I don't know what we're going to see. I see I see Justice League being long. That I, I do mm -hmm. see it being very, very long and probably having a Batman v Superman thing happening where they're gonna cut out scenes and then give fans something in the Blu-ray. Don't know about Wonder Woman. I feel like Patty Jenkins is gonna just kinda, she has her vision. She seems really firm in her vision. When she brings up Donner Superman as like the template for her Wonder Woman, I feel like she kinda has everything in mind. Um, Zack Snyder is a little bit of a question mark for me because I know he likes to extend and do these great extended Blu-rays. I don't know. Ellis, what do you think? I hope so because it seemed like David Ayer had his vision ready to go too. Exactly. And then we didn't quite end up with that. I think that they have learned their lesson and the lesson is, hey, if we release more of a new movie on Blu-ray, we're going to make a boatload more of right. cash. So you get it two ways. Like Riley pointed out, the movie's shorter. That allows for more screenings when it's in theaters. And then if you make it longer with a lot of additional scenes, that means that fans like us are definitely going to gobble up those Blu-rays when they come out. Even look at something like The Force Awakens, which initially came out on Blu-ray with some deleted scenes, and now it's coming out again this Christmas season, so you can buy it for more deleted scenes. Deleted scenes, the great thing about them, they never stop. They just keep the cameras on, and they keep deleting scenes, and we keep buying them. Sinead, are you tired of this trend where the movie comes out, and then we hear, oh no, wait until you see the extended Ultimate Edition? I'm tired of the extended Ultimate Edition being a lot better than the movie I saw in the mm. first place. Yeah. I feel like if it wasn't, if that wasn't the case, then people would forgive that and we would be excited and we would treat it more like deleted scenes, not like this is the movie I should have seen when I spent money to go and see it. That's what upsets people and I don't blame fans for thinking like this is stupid because I want to see the best version of the film in theaters, and then if there's something that's better but it doesn't take away my experience at the theaters, I would be all for it. I'd love to say you're wrong, but you have way too many slices of pizza on your shirt for me to not trust you. <laughs> What's our next question? <laughs> Brandon writes, I want to start off by saying thank you for providing us with entertaining, reliable, and informative shows for both movie and TV news, as well as the other shows you produce. Oh, keep your money. I'm happy to do it for free. <laughs> My question is in regards to Transformers. Personally, I would love to see a Transformers prequel film, have the movie take place on Cybertron with no humans, and showing us how the war got started and how it led to the, the destruction of the planet. Optimus briefly explains it in the narrative of the previous films, but I think it would be awesome to actually see the events that led up to the destruction of their planet. It. Just curious your thoughts on this idea. Thank you for taking my question and keep up the great work. Brandon, I love the way you think. I don't know what your current job is. I'm guessing something in the communications realm. I want you to quit. I want you to start writing this movie right now. Oh, wait, because you're going to write a great movie. Then it's going to get in front of Michael Bay's desk, and he's going to say, yeah, this is okay, but let's put in Hitler and King <laughs> Arthur and time travel into this and completely wipe his booty with your great script. So it sounds awesome to me. Riley, I love this idea. The less humans, the better in movies like this. I just don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. Well, I don't know. I have a feeling we might get a prequel Transformers movie sooner or later because they made that big deal out of having a shared universe and getting this writer's room, bunch of people 
that decided to put Nazis yeah. into, was that Michael Bay? A, bu- that a just, bunch of extinguished people. Yeah. Like, they're not a bunch like, of great, idiots. Like great, great people are sitting in this room and they're going, hey, you know what, this, this is what we need. This is Hitler. I, I don't know. See, yeah. that's, I wish I was a fly on the wall for that because I'm wondering if they're like, here, what we want to do is we want to do some great character development. Maybe a Bumblebee be this and maybe Optimus does this and then Michael Bay comes in and goes, Nazis. And yeah. they go, I, I mean, you're the boss. As much as I love the movie, I don't think you should get high and watch Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure at the same time because that means you're going to come up with ideas like this. Like, yeah. what, like what he has. I would much rather see Brandon's movie. It's a great idea. And I, I, I do think it could possibly happen sooner or later. Maybe even if they spin it off as, a, well, there's probably already a Transformers animated thing. Uh, animated movies. with Yeah, there is. Mm-hmm. With Cybertron. So, mm-hmm. But I, I, I would love to see a Cybertron prequel. Just don't get it near... Michael Bay for me. You know my thoughts on uh, Michael Bay. That's right. Yeah, maybe we save this idea, Brandon, until Michael Bay says, okay, I'm entirely done and the, the, the divorce papers are finalized from me and Transformers. Then we make Brandon's movie if Sinead says that's cool. Absolutely. And we just hope that he didn't hear this. I hope he's yeah. not watching <laughs> because I don't want him to hear your idea. If mm. he is watching, I love 13 Hours. Thank you, sir. You're a gem. <laughs> there you go. Next question. Alex writes, I wanted to ask what Snoke meant by there has been an awakening as I didn't think that he was talking about Rey as she didn't really do anything force-wise by that point. So the theory that Finn is force-sensitive feels correct given all the evidence from a video I saw. Would love to hear your thoughts. Thanks. Yeah, well, uh, that's it was an interesting video, but come on. It's Rey. Rey is the reason the Force awakens, and if we go back, there's little hints as to how and why the Force is awakened. She's able to fly very well. She's able to kind of, you know, she's figuring it out through the movie. She then figures out the Jedi mind trick and gets out of the the restraints. Sure, that was after Snoke had already said there's been an awakening, but it's clear that the new person that we're following, our hero is Rey, played by Daisy Ridley, and it's her story. The Force Awakens with her. Look, I love the idea of Finn having Force powers, but I don't think he does. I think it was a a very awesome misdirect putting a lightsaber in his hand for all the marketing because the Force Awakens, everybody's going, and everybody did. Oh, it must be Finn, he has a lightsaber. What does that mean? Well, it meant that he was just kind of wielding it to kind of help out on the battle. So, it, look, I don't, it, I don't think it's Finn. I, I don't think he's force sensitive. I think that if he was force sensitive, we talked about this in the Mace Windu Snoke video that we mm-hmm. did on Collider. If he was force sensitive, he would have been snatched up probably already by Snoke. Instead, he was FN2187. He was just a mindless first order trooper that then had a change of heart and wanted to help the resistance. So I don't think he's forceful. Well, I mean, he, he, he did resist all that brainwashing that you would assume goes into your stormtrooper training. So he, I, I think that just shows his mental toughness over the force because if he was force sensitive, uh, at least to the ability of Ray, then you would imagine his training as a stormtrooper, somebody would have noticed something, you know? Yeah. They got a lot of higher ups with their stopwatches out looking at all these stormtroopers training. You see a guy floating, you're going to write that down on your clipboard. Now, as far as Snoke saying there has been an awakening, I agree with Riley again. I think that there's just there's little tiny details that are both in the Force Awakens and also just in the ether in that galaxy where if you are yourself force sensitive, you're going to notice a change. You're going to wake up. There's going to be a little a little tinge where there wasn't one before. You're just going to have some hairs on your neck stick up and you're like, wait a minute, something is going on here. Like when Obi-Wan Kenobi could sense that millions of voices were crying out in terror. That one was a gut punch and he had to sit down. Snoke seems a little anxious when he relays the news to Kylo Ren that there has been an awakening. But I'll also tell you this. I don't necessarily need that to be a focal point of the movie when Snoke felt the presence of another Force user. Mm. I love that line so much in the first teaser trailer we saw for The Force Awakens. There's been an awakening. Have you felt it? And it's just like that trailer announcing that Star Wars is back. If that was the only time I ever saw that line, that is A-OK with me. I love the way it was delivered. Yeah, and talk about that that misdirect again. There's been an awakening and Finn pops up. Yeah. And he's looking like he just yeah. woke up from a bad dream. <laughs> so right. I, I, I went, ooh, is it? Is it him? Is it her? Is it him? So, but yeah, in the end, probably not. All right, what's our next question? Colin writes, one of my biggest pet peeves in movies is when characters are driving and keep moving the steering wheel back and forth repeatedly. (laughs) That's not how you drive. Another (laughs) is when characters are looking at old photographs and the photos are poorly photoshopped. If they can make Tony Stark look college-aged again, they should be able to make still photos look good. So what are some of your 
recurring pet peeves throughout movies. You guys are awesome. Thanks. Thank you, Colin, and thank you for your pet peeve, which is also one of mine. The driving thing really does bug me when they're doing this. And it also less so the steering now, because I think they've gotten a better handle on that in recent movies, but they still are looking at the passenger way too much. It's like when you're driving, there's the road, and they're just having a conversation like this, like, oh, really? Yeah. So you think that was the right way to act? And it's like, you're not looking at the road at all. Focus on the road, man or woman in select cases dog so that's one the other one that really bugs me is and you never see it in movies anymore there's some sort of technology or special effect that they put in is when somebody's dead and the eyes are blinking bugs me bugs yeah. me to high heaven cannot stand it when eyes are a blinking if you're already dead if you're dead in movies stop blinking your eyes you know who you are and but i i haven't seen it in movies in like five or ten years because i think that there's some sort of effect in post that they do that's really easy to just be like okay blink away now when we're filming because we can make it look like your eyes are dead that one and then also like bright red blood where it's clearly just like yeah. paint that kind of bugs me too riley yeah. I'm, I'm starting to find myself getting angry so i'm going to take a back seat to yeah. you take a breath real quick but i'll give you one because okay. it might make you mad you know when they're on the phone and then all of a sudden they get hung up on and the, a busy signal comes on like that mm. you're like no it doesn't take it doesn't go that fast okay there's a click and then there's silence and then hello and you gotta wait for a long time before that busy signal kicks in so what is that about why do they do that? The other thing that has to do with phones that I don't like is that sometimes these actors get on the phone and they're like, they don't even pause for the other person to talk. You don't, their timing is you, way their off. Timing is way mm -hmm. off, just like the car when they're driving and they're like, yeah, you know, they'll, they'll be on the phone. They're like, hello. Yeah. Oh, good to hear you. Yeah. No, no, no. I did get the Death Star plans. Yeah. No, here we go. <laughs> Thanks for calling. See ya. You know, it, it, you got to give it some time to get what the other person is, is saying on the other end of the line. And then the other thing, the last thing I'll say about the driving thing, a lot of times actors, because they're not actually driving, they'll do the scene where they're just looking at them the whole time. You're going to run into a school bus if you do not mm -hmm. keep your eyes on the road. Mm -hmm. You got, you can't do this. You it's go, just, yeah, 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 you got it. Yeah, you're right. No, but what I think, no, you got to look, you got you got to pay attention. It's bad for student drivers out there. Do not take your driving lessons from movies. Uh, Sinead, what, what is bugging you in, in cinema? Well, you know, it's funny because I feel like technology-wise, we've gotten pretty advanced. But some of these things I still see a lot in TV. Mm. And one of my biggest things, I can't remember the last time I saw it in a movie, um, but I see it in TV still, is really awful green screen when they're driving. Mm. I cannot stand yep. it. When yep. the background in the back, in the rear, in the window is so like fuzzy and it's mm -hmm. so obvious and you're driving, you're always driving like a in front of a beautiful city landscape that bugs the crap out of me because it takes me out of it and i will say um uh with like the dead bodies thing too um the eye blinking thing but when people freeze and this happens in a lot of tv movies or like when people freeze and then you can see them like doing this yeah oh yeah they're breathing you see that i, I always look at the chest i look at the chest yeah. going up and down hey they're not dead really right. Yeah. And I always I watch that in um, in Westworld all the time. Like every time they uh, pop up and they turn the AIs yeah. off, I'm always like, who's yeah. moving? Who's moving? Who's doing it? Um, because it's hard. Like I understand. I couldn't hold still. Oh no, I'm, my my eyes are, are blinking. But you know what? I'm alive. <laughs> when my eyes blink. How about you, actors and actresses? Yeah, you call that method acting? Yeah. Come on. I'm calling you out. All right. What's our last <laughs> question of the day? Josh writes, uh, hi, Collider Crew. Josh here. Huge fan since 2013. Boom. Since this year's biggest releases are almost over, it's time to look forward to next year. Which blockbuster next year do you do you think is going to be the highest grossing movie? My picks are Star Wars, duh, Beauty and the Beast, Transformers, or Fast 8 for third. Looking forward to hearing from you guys and, continue, and continuing to produce such great content every day. Thanks. Thank you, Josh. Great question to close us out here on, uh, look, I'm going to take Star Wars Episode 8 as my number number one grossing movie of the year. You can't sell Transformers short, though. I don't think it's going to be the number one or maybe even number three or four movie domestically, but internationally, I think that that is going to be neck and neck with Star Wars. I do give the edge to Star Wars Episode Eight, but the Beauty and the Beast movie is something you should not sleep on. That mm -hmm. is going to be an absolute monster 
of a movie. I think that might all the way go up to second in my list. I might have Star Wars Episode Eight, Beauty and the Beast. Then there's a couple other ones that Josh didn't mention because he didn't have time. He's a busy guy. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two, Amazing's or the Amazing Spider-Man, Spider-Man Homecoming, and Wonder Woman are also on the docket for this year. So. Riley, with all of those movies rattling around your head, what do you got coming in at your number one, two, and three slots? Well, I'm going to definitely go with, agree with you. Star Wars is going to be far and away the biggest movie of the year. And we if it's so. good, it's going to be, it, it, it might mm -hmm. get close to beating Force Awakens. I don't know if it will because Force Awakens came out and reinvigorated the, uh, re, re, I can't even do it, yep. reinvigorated the franchise. However, do not count, count Fast 8 out. Fast 8 is going to be coming out, and we're just coming off of Fast 7 being one of the biggest of all time. Right, so, right. But because of all the other movies in the lineup, I don't know. Because, I'm wondering if there's going to be a little bit of franchise fatigue. We don't have the Paul Walker thing, sadly, mm -hmm. you know, that happened with that. That kind of got some eyes on that movie. So top three, Star Wars, then Guardians, then Spider-Man. That's my thinking. Okay, That's I'm going thinking. Star Wars, Beauty and the Beast, and then well, it's... Wait a it's, minute. It's tough. I forgot. Uh oh. Justice League. Oh, that's not. Justice that's League is coming out too, <sighs> and it's coming out in November. So later on in the year. So yeah. I'm does going. it crack the top three? Suicide Squad is still giving a game effort. So I think that you know what I think a lot of that is dependent on how much we respond to Wonder Woman. Yeah. Good point. I'm gonna go Star Wars. I'm gonna go Beauty and the Beast, and then I'm gonna throw. Justice League just ahead of Spider-Man and Guardians, but it's hard to do that. Um, Sinead, I see an awful lot of typing going on in that computer right yeah, now. Yeah, I was trying to look up numbers um, because we also have to remember that the second Fifty Shades movie comes out as well, which I do believe will be a contender for the number three spot because wow. that trailer broke all records and it seems like people are really, really hopped on if they didn't hop on the first time which it, um, already has a huge audience mm -hmm. now it seems like it's insane the audience is insane so I do think that'll be three um, I think Guardians will be two and I think Star Wars will be one I'm gonna ask you an honest question here Yeah. I'm gonna put you in a movie theater right now right and it's the three of us we're at a theater and it's February 10th 2017 okay. and we're looking at three options to go to the movies you can and this is this is what's actually gonna be out in theaters that weekend is Lego Batman John Wick 2 Fifty Shades Darker, which one is Sinead DeVries going to see? John Wick 2, hands down. You're awesome. Mark Riley? Thank God for you, Sinead. John Wick 2. Oh, yeah. John oh, Wick 2. I thought you were going with me to see uh, Fifty Lego Shades Batman? Darker. No, okay. I guess I'm the only one going there. <laughs> Have fun with that one. Oh, I'm not, boy. I haven't even seen the first one. Yeah. I'm not going to see the second. Let's take off some belts and do some spanking with Fifty Shades Darker. <laughs> 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 hmm. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining us here <laughs> on Collider Mailbag. My name is simply Mark Ellis. You can find me online at Mark Ellis Live. Thanks to everybody who came out to the Comedy Store the last two nights where I am sure I did a great set of stand-up comedy <laughs> related <laughs> performance. Let's go over there to Mark Riley. Where can everybody find you? Uh, you can find me at Riley Around on Twitter and Instagram. I'll be on Collider Nightmares on Tuesday. I'll be back here next week. And uh, did you see the schmo down? Did you guys see the schmo down? Oh, we don't want to give away anything. Didn't want to yet, give anything away, but, but um, hell of a match, Mark Ellis. I will say that. Match. Hell of a match. Very competitive, and I appreciate your support. Sinead, where can the kids out there find you? I'm online at Sinead DeFreeze and at that's so Sinead.com. Here on Mondays, hosting TV Talk, on Fridays, hosting Movie Talk, and hanging out with these fools on the weekend on Mailbag. Okay, mm -hmm. I was looking more of like, what's your street address kind of situation? Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> Not giving yeah. that out this week, but we'll try yeah. again next week right here on Collider Mailbag. <laughs> Keep those mailbag questions coming as always. Just email us collidervideo at gmail.com. Make it as original, as fresh, as delicious as you want to. And I'll see you guys back here next Sunday if I'm not fired. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.